Hi everyone, I want to make a presentation on Metadon as part of the different medications or drugs that we're going to consider on our street drugs. Metadon is meant to help, but could also kill. Metadon is a long-acting opioid agonist. It's used to prevent withdrawal symptoms, decreases craving for opioids, increases level of tolerance to opioids. You could say that these are good qualities, right? Because when it prevents withdrawal, it means when you stop doing drugs, you stop doing opioids and you seek help and they give you methadone, you are likely going to have less, less withdrawal symptoms. And the rate at which you'll be craving for the opioids will decrease. And it will build tolerance in you that even if by accident you take opioids within the time you are still being you no know, assisted, you would not come down with his, you know, toxicity symptoms. It decreases the euphoria when tolerance sells in. It means you need very high dosage before you can have it, which is likely not going to be available when you are in rehab. But it can be abused as well. However, it decreases crimes related to opioid usage. It decreases chances of HIV, not because it's you not know, killing HIV virus or anything, but just the chances of having it. Because if, if IV drug usage is decreased and uh, you are now living a chaste life, so it's likely that the rate of contracting HIV virus will likely decrease. It decreases in infective erocarditis by the same means because IV drug usage is the greatest source of infective erocarditis. Decreases mortality secondary to opioid usage. Of course, when cravings is down, withdrawal symptoms are down, tolerance is built, euphoria is low, then mortality will drop. What a great medication, methadone. There's nothing having you no know, merit without the merits. The side effects there are decreased libido. You can talk to your partner on that and talk to your um, health provider who will be able to help. Particularly erectile dysfunction in men can address that with your doctor who will check other parameters and prescribe appropriate medications. There's possibility of increased anxiety, constipation, drowsiness, sweating, edema, and there's a problem in the heart called prolonged QTC. Before taking this medication at the rear, they will likely find out everything about your heart. So they will rule out heart disease, they will do their EKGs, do their cardiac enzymes, all the electrolytes, check them before commencing this medication. Because when there is prolonged QTC, that will lead to side point. To side point will lead to ventricular tachycardia. Ventricular tachycardia will lead to ventricular fibrillation. Ventricular fibrillation may lead to asystole and death. So from helping to now meeting death at a point. Yes, when somebody is on methadone and is taking antifungal or highly active antiretroviral therapy for HIV, there's likelihood of the effects of methadone to be increased. Why? 
those medications will suppress hepatic enzymes. We call them enzyme inhibitors. Therefore, align more of the effects of methadone in circulation. So let your service provider, those in rehab, know that you have skin infection or you have HIV and you are taking medications to handle them because the dosage of methadone you should be placed on will be titrated based on those pieces of info you will supply. On the opposite side of that is the anticonvulsants and rifampicin. They would decrease the effect of methadone. How? They will induce hepatic enzymes and metabolism of methadone will become rapid. So you need higher dosage of methadone or adjust your anticonvulsant and rifampicin level to allow the methadone effect to be noticeable. Overdose is a problem and it causes death. We use it to suppress craving. Like I've said earlier, diminishing the effects of other opioids, it is given a steady milligram liquid in juice or water and it's titrated up by five milligram every three days. So we just don't jump from 30 milligram to 60 to no, no, it's titrated based on the response. Those are the clinics for you know, cleaning drug streets and rehab centers, they have all these files. The side effect like sedation will determine how far you can go. Some are on as high as 100 milligram per day. But if you are too drowsy, sleeping all the time, they may not increase the dosage. Others serving similar purpose are buprenorphine or subozone that, that is a combination of two medications doing similar thing, buprenorphine and nalozone. Alozone, natrazone, and methadone, they are all helping opioid toxicity or opioid addicted situations. Other means for opioid reversal, like I've mentioned briefly, buprenorphine is given sublingual or implanted. Subosone is a long acting injection of combination of buprenorphine and nalazone. There's one called CAM 2038. I don't know much about that. Um, buprenorphine side effects are sedation, headache, nausea, constipation, swelling, and insomnia. Other swans could be handled. You titrate the dosage based on the side effects and the responses you're getting. Nadrazone, on the other hand, is also an opioid antagonist. Um, is either given per oral or injectable. They block the effects of opioid and they also have side effects. And the side effects there are nausea, headache, dizziness, and fatigue. Nakan, you are familiar with nalozone, Nakan. And could be given intravenously, intramuscularly, subcut, intranasal, through endotrigger tube, and it's erosion. So there's no way that you will not be able to get any of these one, two, three, four, five, six routes, you'll get one. And the government is also informed and aware that it should be made available to all EMS people and centers that are handling addictions. 0.4 to 2.0 milligram could be given a repeated dosage every three minutes. 
add all the dose given together until you have reached 10 milligram. Once you have reached 10 milligram and the patient is still the same, particularly with the respiratory rate, consider other causes. But if respiratory rate is not greater than 12, you can set IV line and give 0 0.02 to 0 0.2 milligram. When you give 0 0.02, that is 20 microgram intravenous push every two minutes, you continue to watch the symptoms or you give 40 micrograms slow IV push every one minute until you reach 100 micrograms. Then, if you are not winning, consider other causes of respiratory depression. Alozone infusion could be at 0 0.25 microgram per kilogram per hour. All you are looking for is to reverse the cardiorespiratory effects of the opioid. In opioid intoxication, you can give nasal narcan. Nasal narcan contains 4 mg of nalozone. You spray one per nostril and you repeat in every two to three minutes, alternating the nostrils. The endotracha tube route, on the other hand, you need to dilute with normal saline. Then you flush with five means of normal saline. Then you apply a positive pressure airway, five consecutive ones after your administration. You can nap, then you can have it push also. All these drugs have merits and demerits. The side effects of nalozone is profound withdrawal. There could be seizures, there could be arrhythmia, or severe pain. There's possibility of hypertension or hypotension, increased heart rate, Ventricular fibrillation that might be the cause of death in this patient, so you hook up your cardiac monitor. On central nervous system, there could be agitation, coma, confusion, dizziness, hallucination, headache, apariflexia, irritable, adverse of anger, or yearning. So, nalazone is good, but be careful. Let the good people EMS, your doctors, you now your caregiver, let them be aware. It could cause diaphoresis and pyloerection of the rudama when you look at the skin, and there's possibility of abdominal cramps, constipation or diarrhea, nausea, vomiting, or toothache when you are talking of gastrointestinal tract. Musculoskeletal region could suffer tremor, weakness, spasm, and respiration could become dyspneic, aposic, that's the possibility of nasal congestion, pulmonary edema leading to wheezing, and decreased respiratory rate also with time, rhinorrhea and sneezing, particularly we use the nasal one. In conclusion, methadone, nalozone, natrazone, buprenorphine, subosone that contains two substances like buprenorphine and nalozone together, they all help with opioid addition. But it is possible to abuse methadone and die from it. So don't do it. Go by what they give you at rehab. Don't steal from your other people there looking for ways to clean in order to abuse methadone. Methadone could kill you. So don't take it. Seek help. Government will be ready to help you. Police officer will be ready to help you. 
helps workers will be able to help you. Your family members love you. They want you around. Thank you.